What's going on guys and welcome to the next episode of the Cracker Pack series. Before we get into today's episode, I just want to mention I do apologize we didn't get a video out on Friday. Uh, the original plan was to, but unfortunately I got sick as soon as I finished, like literally the day after I finished the weekly ramble video, I got sick so I wasn't able to actually record. But we are back to it, normal schedule, uh, and we start off with a 7th edition pack to bring in 2019. I'm really excited about this pack. I love 7th edition. Uh, this is, as many of you probably already know, uh, the set that I actually first started playing on. Uh, and so to actually be able to open it up after so many years having not been able to uh, is pretty fantastic. So, of course, we'll look at this from a draft one pick one perspective. So we'll hopefully be able to determine what our actual pack one pick one would be if we were drafting this set. So we'll treat this as our first pack. So uh, our first card here is Gravedigger. Uh, it's a 2-2 for 3 and a black. When it comes into play, you may return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. This is actually a really, really good card for limited. Uh, any kind of graveyard recursion where you kind of get extra value off of already getting a body onto the field is fantastic. Uh, so a card like Gravedigger, perfectly fine. Uh, exactly the kind of card I would want, especially in sort of a black, uh, just like value deck or something like that where I've got some really powerful creatures. I would love a Gravedigger. That being said, I don't know if it's first pickable, but it's definitely not a bad start to the pack. Uh, Healing Salve, uh, I believe is how that's pronounced. Uh, one white for an instant. Choose one. Target player gains three life or prevent the next three damage that would be dealt to target creature or player this turn. I really despise cards like this, especially Unlimited, but really just anywhere. Uh, these are just like little niche cards. It's, it's almost like a trap for new players where it's like, oh, well, if I gain life, I mitigate, you know, some attack by some creature or I make it, I render it useless, like that kind of a thing, but it's temporary, it's not really all that that useful in the long run, and you're wasting a card slot on something like this, and for me that's just not worth it, so I really don't like that card. Uh, Spitting Earth is a sorcery for one and a red, it deals damage equal to the number of mountains you control to target creature. Generally speaking, this is going to be a pretty pop, a pretty reliable uh, removal spell. Yes, it's sorcery speed, but for only two mana, uh, you're going to be at least, hopefully at least able to deal like two, three damage with it, uh, if not even a little bit more and deal with something a little bit bigger. This does scale, obviously, so if you're in a mono red deck, this is fantastic. If you're in a two color deck, this is still pretty good. You're going to probably be able to get maybe up to four damage, five damage if you get lucky, uh, but probably four is going to be the max that you're going to be able to do. In that instance though, this is still a really powerful card, so I do like this. I'm going to keep it with Gravedigger for now, but we'll see what else we get in the pack. Uh, we have a Windrake. It's a 2-2 flyer for 2 and a blue. Pretty straightforward creature, but definitely not bad as filler for a blue deck. Uh, Blue-white flyers is always kind of a go-to strategy for a lot of people, uh, and this is perfect in that deck. It's a perfectly fine 3-drop. It's a 2-2, two -two, yes, for 3, but it does have flying. That's important in limited because that evasion is going to help you get around some of the lower level creatures on the ground that a lot of decks are going to be running, especially red, white, those kind of decks. So I really like Windrake. Not more than the other two cards we have right now, though. Uh, Seeker of Skybreak is 1 and a green for a 2-1 elf. Uh, you can tap it to untap target creature. Um, this is like, oh, I, I don't want to say okay. It's fine. Uh, it's not great just because... I mean, everybody's going to see that this is on the field, so you can untap the creature at instant speed and maybe try and trick block somebody. You're kind of banking on your opponent maybe forgetting, or you getting some kind of like really good combo to stop them from attacking you or doing something crazy. I think this is probably an okay serviceable 2-drop, but probably not all that exciting. There's literally grizzly bears in this set, which is just vanilla 2-2 two -two creature, and that's really the kind of like standard benchmark for this set, at least in my mind, for that 2-drop slot. This just doesn't seem all that exciting to me. Uh, Skate Zombies is a 2-2 vanilla creature for 2 and a black. This isn't that great. Uh, it's filler at best. Uh, like I just mentioned, 2-2 two -two for 2 is kind of the benchmark for this set, especially uh, with cards like these where they're just, they're, there is nothing else. It's just a vanilla creature. So I would hope that I would get like a 3-3 three, three for 3, somewhere in that range. So this just is very underpowered in my opinion. Uh, Circle of Protection Blue, there's a full cycle of these. This is the enchantment for one and a white, and then you can pay one, and the next time a blue source of your choice would deal damage to you this turn, you prevent that damage. Uh, this is a really good cyborg card. This is fantastic against certain decks. Obviously, anybody running blue, this is going to be fantastic if you've got a blue-white flyers opponent. Uh, having something like this is going to hopefully be able to stop a lot of the creatures, slow that damage, then help you win the game. But 
This is not a main deckable card. This is 100% a sideboard card. Uh, it's a very powerful sideboard card. These are great to have. Uh, but in general, not a first pick at all. Definitely something that I would want in a white deck, just to have access to though. Uh, Pygmy Pyrosaur is one and a red for a 1-1. One, one. It cannot block, uh, and you can pay one red, and it gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn, so essentially fire breathing. Uh, this is a very good aggro card. Yes, it's a 1-1 one, one for two, but you get to fire breathe it as much as you'd like, which gets you a mana sink, which will hopefully give you a lot more damage long term. Uh, I like this card. This isn't by any means a game winning kind of card, but uh, it is something that your opponents have to respect because you can just leave up mana and be able to deal tons of damage if they don't block this creature. So I like this. Ideally, it's going to be one of those things that always kind of trades up in combat. Uh, so I do like this. Again, not more than anything that we've already got. I think we've got kind of a good selection so far, uh, so not stoked about that right now. Uh, Unsummon is an instant for one blue, very classic card. Return target creature to its owner's hand. This is just a great tempo swing in a blue deck. Not a first round pick for me, but uh, if I was playing blue, this is exactly the kind of card I would love to have, especially again, sort of in that blue white flyer shell where your opponent, maybe they're playing green and they've got a reach card, but they really only just played it so you could block or something like that. I know this is a specific scenario, but uh, being able to unsummon it for a lot more extra damage would be fantastic. So. I like cards like this. It helps you deal with really troublesome creatures uh, at a very, very minimal cost and at instant speed, so I do like it. Uh, Stream of Life is a sorcery, X and a green, and target player gains X life. This is, uh, funny enough, one of the cards that in the uh, PC game, if anybody remembers the 7th edition PC game, this card would always like annoy the crap out of me because I sucked at playing. But this is not a very good card. I don't like this one. Uh, there's The counterpart to this is Blaze, which deals X damage to, uh, I believe, either target creature or player. I'm not 100%, but I believe that's correct. That's really the card you want, not Stream of Life. Uh, gaining X life is not really the best thing in the world. Sure, it can keep you alive a little bit longer, and it's like a serviceable card, I assume, if you're trying to kind of get filler stuff in, but really not that exciting in my opinion. Uh, our first uncommon is Arcane Laboratory. It's an enchantment for two and a blue. Each player can't play more than one spell each turn. Uh, this is a really like heavy lockdown card. I'm not a fan of this in limited because uh, you're basically counting on your spells to always be better than your opponents. And I don't think that that's always going to be the case. Uh, certainly in some instances, like if you're doing kind of a, if you're against a red aggro deck or something and they only can play one spell a turn, they're kind of gonna be messed up pretty badly, so maybe this is really good sideboard tech against stuff like that, but I don't know that I'd prefer to mainboard this. Uh, I did not draft during this time. I did play, but I did not draft, so I don't really know if this is like a great card or not. I don't think it is, personally. So, not super excited about that. Elvish Lyrist is a 1-1 one, one for 1 green. You can pay a green, tap it, and sacrifice it to destroy target enchantment. This seems like a perfectly okay one drop. It's not great. Uh, obviously a 1-1 one, one for 1 is fine, uh, but it does give you a little bit of extra kind of momentum if your opponent does play an enchantment. Uh, you have some out against it if it's really, really a backbreaking card. Uh, this just gives you an out, which I'm all for giving yourself a few outs. So if I had this late, at late pack or something like that and I was in green, I would be happy picking this up. It's not great, but it is useful. Uh, Charcoal Diamond is an artifact for two of any color. It comes into play tapped, and you can tap it to add black to your mana pool. I actually really like cards like this. Uh, mana accelerants are always great. Uh, it's a, I mean, it can technically go in any deck because it is an artifact, and it does technically ramp you as well. Uh, so I like all of those things. This is definitely a card I would consider, but we of course have our rare. We do have our land also. Uh, Aladdin's Ring, so an artifact for eight mana. You can pay 8, tap it, and uh, it deals 4 damage to target creature or player. This is way too expensive in my opinion. Yes, it's very, very good uh, in terms of its effect is, great, is really good, excuse me. Uh, but it's just way, way too expensive. You're investing 16 mana to deal 4 damage uh, and then 8 mana every time you want to deal 4 after that. Yes, it's reliable, but it's way too expensive, so not a huge fan of that. Uh, for me, it's between these three cards. I think I would definitely take Gravedigger out uh, and probably even Spitting Earth. I think I would probably go Charcoal Diamond. Uh, it's just good ramp, uh, and ramp in a set like this is going to set you hopefully a turn ahead, which is fantastic. Uh, yes, it comes into play tap, so you don't get to use it immediately, which is worth noting, 
but it is still ramp. It's powerful. I really like it. So that's my my choice uh, for my pack one pick one. Of course, if you disagree, let me know in the comment section below. It's fantastic to be back recording these crack a pack videos for you guys. I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, but with that, I'm going to get out of here. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And if you really enjoyed it, please make sure to subscribe. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. I will see you guys in the next crack a pack episode.